Everyone thought it was a completely reasonable thing to do. How about this one? If you run an arts organisation and they employ an accountant, are they an embedded member of the finance industry? Is that how we count other industries by using this methodology? And then do we have to have apply some sort of some sort of stabilising effect where all right, well, we're going to take the accountant out of your organisation or the lawyer out of your organisation and the catering staff out of your organisation and they're not part of the creative industries anymore? Is that is that how it works? So that's a potential problem, I think, with that embedded approach. Where does it stop? Secondly, it kind of posits the creative industries to being essential to absolutely everything. Oh, you can't do everything without the creative industries, because actually you don't know it, but there are secret creative industry spies embedded in your company who are working with, you know, actually for us and not working for you. And if you don't have them, the whole thing falls apart. Well, maybe that's not uh, maybe that's not a reason to think of it. So there's still problems with the methodology that we that we employed in that. And it's fair enough to say that not everyone is, is a fan of the creative industries. Who is this man? James Dyson, creator of the Dyson Fan. Why do the creative industries make him important? This is from an article in the Sydney Morning Herald in 2020. One, where Peter Wilson is talking to James Dyson. One of his pet hates is to hear government ministers talk about the need to support the creative industries, which he believes are either not that creative or not even real industries. Of all the creative jobs I have encountered, Dyson wrote in his autobiography against the odds, it's advertising people who make the most song and dance about creativity. Is that right for our people who work with knife bombs? Is that okay? Is it okay to sledge advertising people like that? And you know, you know, people who work in advertising, that they are not creative at all. When I think of the real creation that my designers are involved in and compare with these creatives who are earning so much just to sit around in the Groucho Club and be generally useless, it makes me vomit. It doesn't even make him want to vomit, it actually makes him vomit. <laughs> that must be enough for uh, And uh, So, what's he getting at? We can only guess, but here's my guess. Perhaps he's saying, so Dyson, creator of innovative fans and fancy hand dryers in toilets and, uh, and vacuum cleaners that don't need that, right? He is the guy to go to for innovation in those particular spaces. Perhaps he's drawing a line between what he sees as creativity and what he sees as innovation. Those advertising people, they don't innovate anything. But my designers, they come up with fancy hand dryers for toilets and so on and so forth. So, which is of greater value? What's the difference between creativity and innovation? So the iterative process of creativity, the, the um, I'm getting it wrong, I'll go back and start again, I'll choose different stimuli from different areas, I'll come up with something, I'll try something else. Like innovation makes more than nothing. Like creativity is the thing. Yeah, look, it's an interesting idea. I have a feeling somebody who would argue in case of renovation might say exactly the same thing? I don't know. Well, I was just going to say, um, like, you know, creativity is the thing that you know, there's no end product inside. There's no end product inside. Yeah. 
what's yeah, what's working for what we is what's not. So well innovation, I'd say like the plan is the result of the plan of creativity is not a result. Oh creativity is unplanned. Well, but innovation has an end result in mind. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I I have not read the book, but I like it. No, 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 it's an no, 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 I like it. It's an interesting but but I think a lot of creativity has an end result. I think it, you know, people make a film and they make a film. Yes. We're not just gonna try out and see how it goes and maybe throw a word in the end. Anyway, it's a problem. As I said, I don't know is my favourite practice, and we'll be hearing it a lot. I don't really know what the difference is between creativity and innovation. Yeah, a lot of you have got Apple MacBooks here. Yeah? What what is more important in that product? Is it the creativity? Is it the design? Is it the look and feel? Or is it the innovation? Is it the technical aspects of it which make a difference to the other PCs on the market? I don't know. I don't know. Here's somebody else who's not necessarily Personally, I'm academic writing and conversation 2014. And I have actually done his article a huge disservice by just picking out one title. Okay, it actually says a lot of things. But this is one part. Is it possible that those involved and invested in the creative industry have used the ambiguities of creative to reduce culture to its economic impact? Those philosophies. I would suggest it is. Here's another one, also from the conversation, a guy called Peter Miller. The term creative industry sector, though, is a bit of a misnomer. I shouldn't mention that this is a direct response to the report that's the value of Australia's creative industry For any sector, for any industry can be creative. Conversely, fashion and design industry and their ilk often are lame. Checks. Little is creative or even interesting about today's consumer computer. So, uh, so look, it is not an easy space. It is an intensive space. So here's a couple of questions. Let me know what you think. <coughs> is the term creative industry just the latest in a long line of attempts to justify the arts among economic Yeah? Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that was I I agree. Well, no, no, I agree from the I agree from the viewpoint that as a business advisor, I would never stray towards the creative merit of someone's design work. Uh, and in a way, if it had found a market which meant that that organisation could garner more than a million dollars a year in turnover, we might assume that the creative um, element of the work is of sufficient quality. We might we might disagree with that, but it may have found a market. In some form or another. Um, and look, the arts has a long history of having to justify itself as an economic force. And perhaps the creative industries is just a kind of the latest weapon in that arsenal. No one's sick enough for creative industries. No one's saying, no, 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 it is something. I don't know what really it really is. It's not, really, it's not just the arts being, you know, trying to trying to wave its own flag. No one. Is there such a thing as the cultural industries? And is that different to the creative 